the new VGN Dragonfly F1 series mouse available for pre-order on metkeys.com has caught the attention of many mouse enthusiasts with its high quality specs, no hole design, and a low 49 gram weight or 55 gram weight with the F1 Pro Max version. All of this while being incredibly affordable with the Pro Max only coming in at $57 the Pro coming in at $50, and the regular F1 coming in at only $40. However, both the Pro and Pro Max versions, while being 4K Hz capable, use different MCUs from each other. That's where this video comes in, where I'll be covering the Nordic NRF 52 series 833 MCU and that NRF 52840 MCU. There is no doubt that the Nordic chips are the industry leader in 2.4 GHz transceivers, but with the different options of the VGN Dragonfly F1 series mouse, including these two Nordic chips, you're probably wondering what are the differences between the two. Even though there are actually other Nordic chips available, these are typically what you'll find in a 4 GHz mouse. For example, in their most recent mice, G Wolfs and Razer use the same NRF52840 Nordic chip that the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro Max uses, and Razer is widely considered to have the best mouse internals out of any mouse, but the Dragonfly F1 Pro uses the NRF52833, which is actually a newer chip than the 52840. Since both of these chips are fairly similar, I'll be going over the technical differences between the two specified by Nordic Semiconductor. In this table, you can see all the technical differences between the two. Some of these you might be familiar with, such as flash and RAM, while some of these might be confusing and new terms to you, such as matter. I will be going over all of these, and there will be timestamps below, so if you do know what one of these are, you can easily skip to the next that you have questions about. Additionally, since most people are concerned about the performance that both of these chips can provide, I'll be giving you a general rundown of what each of these specs could mean for performance. First up is Matter. Matter is, as Nordic Semiconductor says, the new standard that unifies the smart home market. The goal of this is to agree on an application layer standard for connected home devices, making manufacturing these devices easier and being an easy to use unified standard for smart home devices that works across a wide range of platforms and ecosystems. It sits above IPv6 and aims to create a more cohesive and friendly experience for smart home device owners. It's kind of a mouthful, but in terms of gaming mice, I don't think this means a whole lot. Moving on to flash memory, this is meant for long-term storage of firmware and doesn't really mean much in terms of a gaming mouse's performance. If you can get the same firmware done on an NRF52833 as an 840, it really doesn't matter. Next is RAM. RAM is the volatile memory used for temporary storage of data and instructions that are currently being used by the microcontroller's CPU. Volatile memory is memory that is lost when power is interrupted or turned off. When a program or instruction is executed on an MCU, the CPU reads instructions and data from flash memory and stores them in RAM. The CPU can then access the data and instructions in RAM much faster than if it had to continually read from flash memory. This makes the MCU's operation more efficient and responsive, so it should have an impact on a gaming mouse's performance. However, RAM has a bigger impact on performance for devices with more complex configurations. So if the configuration for a VGN Dragonfly is the same between the Pro and the Pro Max versions, and the 840 microcontroller has double the RAM that the 833 has, while it could still boost the overall performance of the mouse with the added headroom, the 840 MCU is likely not providing an increase in performance here. Overall, it depends on the specific workload. QSPI is one that some of you maybe haven't heard of, but all it stands for is Quad Serial Peripheral Interface, and it's an extension of standard SPI, which is Serial Peripheral Interface. It's used to read, write, and erase flash chips with four data lines instead of one. Even though QSPI and SPI both have the same clock speed, QSPI provides four times the data throughput, lower latency, and reduced power consumption. The NRF52840 uses QSPI 
while the NRF 52833 uses standard SPI. However, both chips support high-speed SPI, but you can make with that what you will. This can make a difference in a mouse's performance, as QSPI can increase the rate of data transfer between the sensor and the MCU, which means improved tracking and higher polling rates can be achievable with QSPI. However, it's likely that the Pro and Pro Max versions of the VGN Dragonfly are both using high-speed SPI. But that could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But regardless, QSPI is better, but it might not be a factor here in performance. Moving off from that to an easy one, the operating temp range is just the operating temperature range. This is self-explanatory, and in terms of a gaming mouse, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Moving on to packages, this is another really basic one. It just refers to the packaging around the integrated circuit itself, not to be confused with the packaging that the circuit is shipped in. And now I'll get into the last one, which is GPIO. GPIO stands for general purpose, input, output, and typically works in conjunction with SPI or QSPI. It's used to communicate with devices such as sensors, LEDs, and switches to set them as either an input or an output. In short, these are just the pins on the microcontroller. So the 840 comes with 48 GPIOs, while the 833 varies between 18 and 42, depending on what package you get, which I mentioned earlier. How many pins are necessary depends on the factors such as what sensor and how many buttons a mouse uses. Since these factors don't change between the different versions of the Dragonfly mouse, the number of GPIOs these two microcontrollers use doesn't matter. So in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really seem like either of these chips would make a noticeable or measurable difference in the performance of these two gaming mice. So it begs the question, why would they choose to use these two different chips instead of just sticking with the basic NRF52840. Well, the NRF52833 is slightly cheaper. If you bought a thousand of these chips, the NRF52833 would cost roughly around $1 less per chip, saving $1,000. But otherwise, these two chips will likely offer close to identical performance between the mice, assuming they are both using high-speed SPI. The main reason for the price increase between the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro and the Pro Max is also because of the use of a different battery that offers double the battery life of the Pro version. However, I'm curious about the results where my viewers test the latency of these two mice. If there is no detectable difference, then maybe we will see more of the NRF52833 in future mice.